The Gospel of John is probably the best gospel and my favorite book to read when I'm looking for the concepts of Jesus as God and God as God and what that really means in reality. It's one thing not to believe in God, but to believe in him and try to separate what makes him him from him is something that we often do. Let me explain. We know that God is the truth, but not only does he have truth, he is the fountain of truth. So anything that is true is him. But often we try to separate truth from him and walk down the street with his truth, without his presence and without his name. And we wonder why we look down at our hands and we're just holding a pile of lies. We try to separate meaning from things he has given meaning to so that we can enjoy it, so that we can have it as a status symbol so that we can do what we want without immediate judgment or without what it takes to do that thing. Because God is a God of process and a God of blessings. And, and sometimes we want the blessings without the process or without what comes with it. But there's a very good reason he puts meaning in the things he puts meaning into. I'm gonna to talk to that a little bit today. I was talking with a friend once. We were talking about the repercussions of having sex and how it can affect your mind and it can make you like somebody, it can make you attached to somebody. It feels like you love them whether you do or you don't. You have that feeling of emotional attachment and, and really it's spiritual too. It's not just the physical act. The topic came up of, of whether you can have sex and extract the meaning from it and it can just be a physical act. If God didn't exist, I'm, I'm sure you could. It would be like any other physical act. But God put meaning inside of sex for a reason. And here's the thing about meaning and about truth. When God does something, because everything he does is true, because he is truth, you can't circumvent truth. You can't actually violate it. You can only violate yourself in pursuit of changing your perception of the truth so that you see it as something that's more convenient or more palatable for you. So when you try and take truth, rip it open and stuff something in it like a Trojan horse, all you're doing is really fooling yourself. You can't actually change truth. That's what makes it truth. It's immutable. You can't change it. You can't actually violate truth. The truth will always be the truth and God will always be God. That's why God is unchanging and that's why truth is unchanging because God is unchanging and he is truth. So this friend and I were having this discussion and I was thinking about it and I was like, first of all, you can never take the meaning out but secondly, you don't want to, because if you get to a point where you don't feel the meaning anymore, because it'll always mean something, I'm sorry, it always will, God made it to be that, so it will always be that. It's sin neutral. God's, God's decisions are not going to cater to the fact that you have a sin nature. No, he made it that way because it's beautiful when done right, and that's what he made it for. So he's not going to take that away, and I'll get to why in a second. But you don't want to get to a place where you don't feel the meaning anymore. Because when you get inside of a marriage, you're going to need the closeness. And if you have been overexposed and you haven't healed to the point where sex with your husband or with your wife doesn't even bring you guys together any longer because you've been so overexposed, you've experienced so much, you have the spirit of comparison. You don't see sex as something that links with love because you've experienced it in all the wrong areas. Then you need healing. And it's not something that Jesus can't do, but it's a place that you don't wanna be. Anybody who thinks that they can just separate it and make it just a physical thing, the only thing you can do is pervert your perception. So that's how you see it. And then it will bite you on the backside when you're actually in a marriage or in a relationship that you actually value and the closeness and intimacy that comes with physical touch that is a God-given thing will not feel present anymore. And you won't have the feelings of closeness with your spouse in the long term, which is the whole reason for why sex brings that closeness. Matt, how in the world does this link to the Gospel of John chapter 1. Well, God is God, and he's been God since the beginning, and he's going to be God forever. And it's the same with Jesus. Jesus is of God. And Jesus was there when sex was created, when sex was thought of as a physical manifestation of marriage and of love and of covenant. And God was kind enough to give us that gift of the pleasure and the dopamine that comes with it. But we have a proclivity where we like to take the immediate good stuff that comes with sex. None of the long-term good stuff, actually we forsake that in lieu of an abundance of the short-term positive that comes from it. And actually you can have both if you wait or you're in the correct relationship. You're going to need sex to bring you closer in your marriage. This is the whole thing about, look, ladies, let your man have sex with you when he asks because you guys need it. 
it's not a thing where he's like he's just being a pig and he just wants it more than you no he needs it because he wants to feel close to you it helps him feel close to you and it should do the same your way we're going to need the meaning in the things God put meaning in in your life you can't just rip it out and forsake it and try and do it yourself you can't just change the fact that with the physical act comes closeness and it's supposed to it's good you don't want to tear those things apart and you can't tear truth away from Jesus this is my criticism for more secular guys who admire Jesus but don't give your life to him. Well, if he's truth and if he's telling the truth and if the Bible's the truth, give your life to it. You can't just take truth for what you think it is and try and walk away with it, but it's what ends up happening. And same with godly things such as marriage, intercourse, relationship, friendships, uh, fatherhood. You can't take out the bits that you like and expect to be able to stuff back into truth, whatever you consider it to be. You know, it will always catch up with you. And this is really important for teenagers and people in their early 20s still experiencing relationships for the first time. I mean, I was encouraged growing up. My dad bought me my first pack of condoms when I was 13. It didn't mean anything to me because you're a boy and it's just funny and you just do your thing. And people say, oh, that's male privilege. Well, it actually messed me up. It actually jacked me up, okay? So this is why boys need to be careful. If they want to be able to love one woman for the rest of their life, if they have a chance of doing that, it's very important that they keep the meaning of sex obvious and keep the triggers that come after the emotion of feeling intercourse to trigger more closeness. Because if the emotion or the feeling of sex, the physical feeling of sex starts to trigger things like rejection, abandonment, pride, arrogance, things like that afterwards, you start to change your perceptions and you start to perceive that act as something that is not going to lead to a closer, more bonded, more tightly bound marriage. And you're really gonna need that when you get older. The same is of course important for girls too, but I just wanna tell the boys, look, it's gonna be, I don't have any sons, but when I do, it's gonna be completely expected. You don't just go do that with anybody. No, no, you, you honor your future marriage. You honor yourself in that. That's very important to me. I've spent a long time trying to bind back together the meaning God has put in something. They actually never left that thing, but my feelings, I want them to go along with what they should. In my last video, I spoke about denying your feelings access to the decision-making center of your brain, and that's something you have to do at the same time. I do want to feel the closeness when I get into a marriage with my wife. I don't want it to be like she's just some whatever, just some random girl that I don't care about. No, I want it to be like a closeness. I want it to bring us closer because as I said, there's gonna be times you're gonna need it, but also that's what I'm waiting for. That's what you should be waiting for in a marriage. That's what you want. No, like for me, it's just a physical thing. It doesn't actually, it doesn't matter. It's just a physical thing. We've separated it. We're just friends with benefits. You know, I just do whatever I want. It doesn't matter. I'm not the type to get in my feelings. All right, I do believe if you see that long enough, you will get to a point because you're built to want relationship because you're fearfully and wonderfully made by God in his image and he loves you. So he's not gonna let that forsake you. He's not gonna let your value nor your intelligent design forsake you because you've started to be your own God with your own wisdom and with your own philosophies in your head. You know, it will get to a point where you want something real and you've got to seek healing from the Lord at that time. You've got to seek healing from Jesus Christ at that time because he's the only one who can stitch you back together, especially when you've been doing things as serious as taking truth, taking meaning, opening them up, stuffing in whatever you want, pulling out whatever you want, trying to violate it, but all you're doing is actually violating your own conscience, your own flesh sometimes, your own idea of reality, your own perceptions, your own ability to have normal feelings that go with normal things, closeness with God, image, your idea of God as well gets violated because he is truth. You're just violating your own idea of truth. You can't actually violate him, but you are violating the image of him in your mind. And there'll be one day where he calls you back and you know, and I'm not hating on you, I'm, this is me. You know, this is what led me to Christ. I for, forever tried to let all these things be what I wanted to define them as. Really, you know, I had some good times. What led me to it is, I can't keep doing this forever. I want some proper relationships. I want my marriage to be blessed. I want it to be good, but I've completely destroyed a very central part of it for myself. How is that gonna get redeemed and healed? And Jesus Christ is the only way for that. Well, I met the one that's okay, it's all good. Okay, great, invite God into that relationship because when the times get hard, you want to have had him there for a while. If not, and you wanna fall and find him there, that's good too. I'll see you in heaven when all this happens. I'm just telling you what I would do if I were you. Hey, let me know what you thought in the comments. Like, subscribe, 
and uh, if you really liked it, send it to a couple of people uh, that you think would enjoy it or get something from it too. I appreciate you.